Why aren't you wearing pink? Uh, Nick, you can't sit with us anymore. I'm sorry. You're out of the podcast. First chance. <laughs> first chance. Welcome back, audience. Welcome back to more unsolicited white guy opinions on movies. Nick's gone for real now. No, I'm leading in. You choose to leave. I'm, I'm getting. You better get back here before you have to do your part. I'm Nathan, your half white guy. I'm Nick, your one white guy. Welcome back to the podcast where we talk about comedy, movies, and all things fetch. What is fetch? Actually, we'll learn a little bit about that, about who came up with the word fetch and actually put it in the movie. But we have a special guest with us again. Today we are doing a special movie. It is beloved by this, uh, this lovely lady sitting to our... What is this? Our oh, left? My left. Our ref? Our right? Yeah, your left, yeah. And I'm allowed to say the R word because they said it so many times in this Oh, movie. no, you're no, <laughs> you're no. Absolutely not. I'm going to have to bleep that. <laughs> but see, see, audience, remember, I told you he would say it. He is the white guy. So, Vanessa, you wanted to come back and do another movie with us. Absolutely. It's the 20-year anniversary. Of this special film called... Mean Girls. Mean Girls. 2004 when it came out. 2004, different time. A lot of young actresses coming in uh, that would make their mark with this movie. Actually, most of them have successful careers. Maybe one of them went to rehab a little bit later, but that, you know, that, that tends to happen with these young, young stars. We are doing Mean Girls, directed by Samantha Jane and Arturo Perez Jr., starring Renee Rapp as Regina George and Gory Rice as Katie Heron and B.B. Wood as Gretchen Wieners. Betty, uh, Betty Brandt. Betty Brandt. As, as Katie Heron. As Katie Heron. That's the one we're doing, right? No, absolutely not. Okay. Well, it's the one I watched. You didn't watch the 2004 one? Uh, maybe. Okay, fine. Maybe I did watch it a little bit. Let me go to the real one. I put it a little further down. Mean Girls, released in 2004, directed by Mark Waters, starring that girl that got bit in Cloverfield as Janice Ian. <laughs> That guy who videotaped everything from the I Spit on Your Grave remake as Damien. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tina Fey as Miss Norbury. Amy Poehler as uh, Regina's mom. And did she even get a name? June George. G Jean George? Oh, June. Okay. June George. Okay. And uh, no one else in this movie, especially not Dana from Black Christmas, is Gretchen Wieners. Bye. I think Tim Meadows deserves a shout out. Yeah, Tim Meadows as, what's, what's his character's name? Principal Duvall. Principal Duvall in... Get out of here, Dewey. This <laughs> you don't want any part of this. In this movie. Let's see, Vanessa. So uh, let, me, uh, let me just list it off and maybe you can fill in everyone. Uh, Lindsay Lohan plays... Katie Heron. All right. Uh, Rachel McAdams plays... Regina George. And Amanda Seyfried? 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 Seyfried. Amanda Seyfried plays... Karen Smith. All right. Group there, the plastics, as we already said, uh, our favorite, Dana, uh, Black Christmas, Lacey Chabert. As Gretchen Wieners. As Gretchen Wieners. <laughs> the who, daughter of the inventor of Toaster Strudel. Yes. He, she, he, her dad apparently invented Toaster Strudel, but we never see any other of their parents in this movie besides Katie's and Regina's mom. And dad. No parents. Do they have a, does she have a dad in this movie? Regina Georgia does have a dad. Oh. He's crying when they're take when Regina's mom's taking pictures of her for Halloween. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. This is, again, kind of another young adult movie take on the horrors of adolescence. Agreed? I don't disagree. Oh, okay, don't disagree. To an extent. To an extent. I would say it kind of falls in the same vein as movies that make you question, you know, going through adolescence. Those 80s Breakfast Club, John Hughes type movies. Movies like that, coming of age, young adult movies. And there's never been somewhere more safe or fun to be than a high school. We all learned that in Heathers. <laughs> <laughs> or Elephant. You couldn't make Heathers <laughs> today, man. <laughs> oh, God, no, you couldn't. Anyway, Nick, would you like to lead us in with the IMDb summary? Katie Heron is a hit with the plastics. The A-list girl click at her new school until she makes the mistake of falling for Aaron Samuels, the ex-boyfriend of Alpha Plastic Regina George. That's no, like one of the many plots in this movie. Yeah, this movie, I do feel like, and maybe you can chime in what you think on this, Vanessa. I feel like this movie has a, a bunch of plots that is happening all at once. And it kind of, in my opinion, I'm like, what are, you know, what is the focus? What do you feel like? I think the focus is how the teenagers interact with each other. Uh, because Aaron Samuels is kind of like in the middle of all of it. If Katie Heron had never fallen in love with Aaron Samuels, then there wouldn't have been a reason for her to agree with Janice Ian that she needs to sabotage Regina George's life. 
And again, the reason we're doing this movie, not only because Vanessa loves it, is because this movie is incredibly popular with millennials and I think Gen Z as well. Is, it's is turning 20 this year. It's turning 20 years old. This is the first movie as well written uh, for the feature length by Tina Fey. This is Tina yeah. Fey's first movie. After this, she, wouldn't go, she would go on to write in 30 Rock and The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Mm. And she would actually work uh, on the ad- adaptation into the Mean Girls musical starting in 2013 before it premiered, I think, in like 2017, 2019. I forget. But she was working on adapting it with, I think, her husband into a musical. And honestly, that's that's the cycle of movies like this now. Uh, well, before Mean Girls, yeah. she was already writing for and starring in Saturday Night yeah, Live. SNL, obviously. Yeah. yeah, of course. Where, you know, her and Amy Poehler met uh, to to lead those but it's kind of the cycle of, of movies now. I feel like an, a classic movie, you know, from the millennial era gets one of two things. A TV show that's successful and then a musical <laughs> or a musical first and then maybe a TV show that comes after it. I'm going to have to cite this. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't remember. I'll name one for you that hasn't gotten a musical, but it did get a TV show adaptation. And that's from Dust Till Dawn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, that, so <laughs> that's on its way to being a musical now. So expect, <laughs> expect the Dust Till Dawn musical. That's coming soon. Should we uh, should we get into past experiences with the movie? Honey, when did you first see this? I was 14 years old. I watched it when I was in high school. I used to have a book about Lindsay Lohan's life, and she talks about the different projects that she d- she had done. And that's when I knew of the plot, but I hadn't actually seen the movie. I was taking this half a semester long conflict resolution class in high school and we got to watch the movie in class to talk about it conflict resolution how does it rank because i gotta ask with before how does it rank against legally blonde uh in your opinion i think legally blonde is better i think that would still be my favorite movie Mm -hmm. Uh, mean girls is just one that i like to watch from time to time but i wouldn't say it's my ultimate favorite movie because ultimately i think legally blonde has a better plot so you watch this for conflict resolution yeah, that was... Um, was the first two-thirds what not to do? <laughs> I think we just debriefed it afterwards, but I watched it in spring of 2010, so... so no, six spring years, 2011. Six years post, but yeah, I no, can... 2011, I can, yeah. I could imagine the teacher being like, okay, so see how the, she is escalating the situation right now? See how this is escalating? This is getting worse. And this leads to Regina George screaming for a solid minute while running around <laughs> later in the movie. Oh, that was actually really funny to me. She has a lot of iconic lines. I'm just picturing Rachel McAdams in like the ADR booth, just <laughs> screaming her head off for, for multiple takes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, now, Vanessa, I have a question for you. Did you know that this is also based on a book? I did know that. All right. Do Queen you know- bees and wannabes. Yep. Queen bees and wannabes helping your daughter survive clicks, gossip, boyfriends, and other realities of adolescence by Rosalind Wiseman. This is a nonfiction self-help book. That Tina Fey was like, well, I want a challenge for once. Let me see. <laughs> Let me see if I can create a craft a narrative out of this, which which actually might explain a lot about the narrative of this movie. Honey, who is Katie Heron and what's her story? Where does this all begin? So Katie Heron is a teenage girl who grew up with her zoologist parents in Africa. Who's she played by? She is played by Lindsay Lohan. All right. Who is fresh off of Freaky Friday, fresh off of Freaky Friday, which is another uh, Mark Walters Waters movie, right? Is it? Yeah, I think he directed that. Oh, yeah. I just know he did Vampire Academy. Yes, he also. So he directed (laughs) Freaky Friday with uh, Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, she was so good in that. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis. She so that's that. This is actually Lindsay Lindsay Lohan's first non Disney movie. This was produced by Paramount. Yes. Yeah. So but all before this, it was The Parent Trap. Uh, Herbie fully loaded. <laughs> oh, I watched that. Uh, but I think um, Lindsay Freak, Lohan originally right. wanted to play Regina George. She did. And they decided it would be better for uh, Rachel McAdams to actually play Regina George. She they decided because they, uh, I think Amy Poehler, not Amy Poehler, Tina Fey said only nice girls who have been bullied can be mean. And so that was kind of an interesting reflection upon like why they cast Regina George. Uh, sorry. Rachel McAdams. Uh, Rachel McAdams as Regina George. It's like, yeah, Rachel McAdams is actually very nice and like very sweet. And it actually might have revealed something later about maybe Lindsay Lohan's character, which is something to note in real life. So she's the teenage girl who grew up in Africa with her zoologist parents. And when her mom gets offered a tenure track position at Northwestern, they moved to Illinois. So she, for the first time, is going to go to a public 
high school oh, in the fuck. United States. <laughs> And gave, she has no idea what to expect. Anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's not even starting as a freshman. She's starting as a junior. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a hard world to jump into. Good luck. It's, this is more of a jungle than that jungle she just left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the scenes where she imagines all the, all the other kids acting like animals are pretty funny. Yeah. It's like, they come to the watering hole at the mall, <laughs> and a bunch of them are just acting like monkeys. <laughs> but Katie is going to this high school for the first time, and everyone's... No one cares about her. No one's nice to her. Ever, it, 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 she seems ignored, except for two people. The first day always sucks. And the art freaks. The art freaks. And they're Janice, Ian, and Damien. What's the last name? I forget, to be perfectly honest. Janice and Damien. Janice, played by Liz, Lizzie Kaplan, yeah. who, again, would explode in Cloverfield. Cloverfield. She's actually Spoilers. named She's actually named for the <laughs> art, uh, musician Janice Ian, who is actually openly lesbian. So that's kind of like why it all comes back to this. Well, Janice in this one is a fake Janice Ian because she gets with a guy at the end. Oh. <laughs> so uh, maybe they couldn't get away with that. 2004. 2004 they still Can't had be to. be too gay. Too, not too gay. Man, man, man gay is okay. Man. Women gay bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Janice and Damien, they befriend Katie. And they give her the lowdown on everything in the school. They explain all the cliques and where all the cliques sit in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. and that's when they yeah. tell her you have to beware of the queen bees, the plastics. The plastics. Who are the plastics? They are the, I guess, teen royalty is what Damien called them. They rule the school. They oh, pretty shit. much um, say how things go. Everybody kind of like afraid of them, looks up to them, but doesn't yeah. like them. Yeah. It's this very complicated image in some ways but Ooh, the main one yeah. is regina george she is i mean regina literally means queen it is it's queen in a lot of like pre uh, like latin based uh languages you know how old rachel mcadams is in this movie 26 she's like 25 actually but all the rest of them are like 19 i thought uh lindsay lohan was younger 17 okay she was more like her character's age yeah yeah so 17 uh, the other two, I believe, um, Lacey Chabert and Amanda Seyfried are 19. We're introduced to Regina George <laughs> by way of her literally being carried by a bunch of the, a bunch of boys onto the field for, uh, for PE, for PE, uh, session. Well, queen royalty of the school. And it's really her, just her, because in that montage of people being asked about her, they talk about, uh, her and only her, where, mm -hmm. uh, where is how far her, like, influence goes there's two fendi purses and a silver lexus what is a fendi purse fendi is a designer oh okay yeah we would know i i didn't know that but <laughs> I, I did understand what a silver lexus meant <laughs> she's got that influence over her parents too yeah. when, when katie goes to her house for the first time your room is so big thanks i made my parents trade yeah i love rachel mcadams in this i really do i think she she i i wish um it makes me sad that she's not in like the last third of the movie very much she owns every scene she's in. Yeah. She's completely believable she, as like this ice thing, queen yeah. who runs shit. Yeah. She's my favorite thing in this movie, to be perfectly honest. She's the most memorable one. Oh, she's she the one that everyone remembers. Oh, she shines in this. She, she just oozes manipulation and entitlement, but she also confidently runs the show and she's, she's never caught off guard either. Except for when she screams. It's the most. Oh, well, <laughs> that's that's why she <laughs> that's what happens when she's caught off guard. Uh, you see the influence she has on anyone and everyone around her and it really does make sense why Katie kind of like falls into her web or kind of like falls under her or or she kind of gets seduced by her well, in a sense. Yeah, because Regina couldn't let someone else who could rival her not be part of her clique. So it better that Katie is under her plastic. Group so you're than... saying that she felt threatened by Katie when yeah. she saw her. Yeah. Uh, okay. Like, I, I think keep that... your friends close and your enemies close. Yeah, I think that's what mm. it is. I mean, I Katie's actually, our main. I actually agree. Yeah, our, our Katie's our main character. You know, she's our hero. She's the one we're supposed to be rooting for because she has a growth. You know, Regina invites Katie to sit with her after Katie gets, you know, harassed by some asshole. At he he asked if her muffin was buttered. That's so gross. That's gross. You know, um, there this this movie was supposed to be a little bit more uh, risque. In the line, the line in the original draft that Tina Fey wrote is he was going to ask, "Is your cherry popped?" Ew. Because they wanted that PG thirteen rating. And they weren't able to do it. There was a bunch of other stuff omitted. There was going to be another line I, I remember reading about 
Remember, who's the girl that said that she made out with a hot dog? Isn't that one of the lines? Oh, Amber Delacio. It was going to be one of the burnouts. It was going to be doing something else with a hot dog. That was the original <laughs> line. They had to cut that. This is Tina Fey's original writing, though. This is what she was going for. But I was like, to be perfectly honest, that's more realistic high school, in my opinion. That's real high school. But I feel like the rating <laughs> matters, too, because you can't make a movie about teenagers in high school and it's like over PG-13, right? Because it's like meant for. What was Heather's at? I don't know, man. It was Maybe close. Heather's earned an R. Yeah. I, I mean, you can. They're literally murdering their peers. In yeah. That movie. I think you can. It just kind of depends what the. See, see, murdering your peers isn't as bad as suggesting sex on screen with with teen with teenage characters. So that's how America views it. So, oh, yeah. You can show as much blood and violence and torture and depravity as possible. If you so much as flash a nipple. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, I, I, the MPAA is going to have a field day with you. <laughs> oh, my God. But yeah, so that was the original line. And then we also get to meet the two other plastics. Who are the two other plastics? The two other plastics are Karen Smith, mm -hmm. who Janice said is the dumbest girl you'll ever meet. Mm -hmm. And Gretchen Wieners, who knows everything about everybody. That's why her hair is so big. It's full of secrets. Full of secrets. And, her, and she is the daughter of the... The inventor of Toaster Strudel. <laughs> Toaster Amanda Strudel. Seyfried playing Karen and... Lacey Chabert. Lacey Chabert. Gretchen Wiener. Lacey Chabert was actually specifically chosen to be Gretchen Wieners. I guess uh, Tina Fey was a really big fan of uh, uh, Wild Thornberries. <laughs> oh, nice. I guess there's something like that. She yeah. was like, she, they were just like, yep, it's got to be Lacey Chabert to be Gretchen Wieners. Two years after this, she'd get a garden tool in the back of her head in Black Christmas. That's true. Ooh, which we have covered on this podcast. Please go check that out. <laughs> oh, once she meets the plastics officially, um, they invite Katie to sit with them. And then they ask her, well, they tell her that they'll she'll sit with them every day for the rest of the week. And on Wednesdays, they wear pink. But you really can kind of see it in Lindsay Lohan's eyes, just kind of like, I mean, but getting noticed by someone popular in high school is kind of like a call to adventure for someone, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and then Janice Ian, she's mad. She was she used to be a plastic. And That's she got right. kicked out. Oh, yeah. Everyone thought she was gay. Well, guess what? Well, were, Regina started right. a rumor. Regina started a rumor about her being gay. So Not she got gay. kicked out. Bye. <laughs> her mom's chest hair. Oh, my God. This has to be one of the... I, I Sorry, quick tangent. This is probably the most quoted movie of our generation. Do you disagree? No, I feel like everyone can reference at least one or two lines from Mean Girls. I uh, think as the years and years progress, this just keeps getting more and more popular. I mean, look, we have a musical based off of it now. Yeah. But it was already extremely popular when I was watching it in high school. I, You said something. You looked it up. It was a sleeper hit, hun. Yeah, that's what the Wikipedia says on the movie, that it's a, it was a sleeper hit. It came out. A lot of people didn't see it. And then it stayed as it stayed in theaters, it got more and more uh, it got more and more noticed, and late, at weeks after its release, it would uh, it started making more of its money much later. Tina Fey plays Miss Norberry, who teaches the math class that Katie is in. Katie sits behind Aaron Samuels. What's significant about Aaron Samuels? Yeah, do tell, honey. He is Regina George's ex-boyfriend. But Katie has an enormous crush on him. He does. Do you know who was supposed to be Aaron Samuels at one point as well? Who? James Franco. Oh, no. James oh, no. Franco was originally casted, but he he decided to quit because he had to go tell Tobey Maguire that he was taking pictures of his friend, the bug. <laughs> he had to go. No, he had to go tell Tobey Maguire, you still taking pictures of your friend? <laughs> the bug. And then, and then proceed to slap him yeah. in front of a bunch of people at a party. <laughs> yeah. I think I remember reading that Tina Fey cast him because... Um, Jonathan Bennett, because he kind of looks like a young Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon, that's correct. You're right. Yeah, he kind of looks like a younger Jimmy Fallon. A little bit. A little bit, I guess I'd say. At least he's not laughing at the camera the whole fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> and she lets in, she lets the uh, the two other plastics know that she likes him, and they tell her, that's a no-no. No, do not go for that. That's off limits. This is, is this the next day after? They, they're having lunch again when this happens, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also want to notice something. Wasn't one of the rules that they couldn't wear jeans on? Yeah, exactly. But then fucking Katie is wearing jeans. Well, I, th I think... She's not a very good plastic. She's not a good plastic yet, but by that definition, I guarantee Gretchen would have been like, I'm so sorry. You can't sit with us. Well, that's mostly like Regina's call, I'm sure. But I think, well, I mean, what you, what you notice as the movie progresses is how the wardrobe changes. Like Katie completely changes the way she mm -hmm. dresses, like the way she does her hair. Like 
starts wearing makeup. I mean, obviously she starts picking up the mannerisms that Regina has. Um, so I think that was probably kept to show how much she changed because she didn't even own anything pink for the Wednesday. Well, yeah, it's a good point. It's a, it's a good way to watch the internal on the external is watching a character change clothes, change colors, all kinds of different things. Aaron Samuels is played by Jonathan Bennett, who would go on to be in a lot of Hallmark rom-com, Christmas rom-com shit. Well, probably alongside, uh, and he is, alongside Lacey Chabert. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a soccer player because he couldn't make the football team, I guess. Yeah. Loser. Yeah, I know. And I'm sorry, Katie can do better. I don't see what she sees in this guy. I really don't. I, I think it's actually because, I mean, this is kind of referring to what Vanessa says. I think... Katie, through a majority of this movie, is incredibly shallow from the beginning. I actually think because that's the reason she's after Aaron. That's yeah, but the whole that's thing. Most teenagers. Yeah, but still, would you consider that shallow? Well, I think that's normal teenage behavior. Again, yeah, I agree with you. Normal teenage behavior. But by that definition, aren't most teenagers shallow? Yes, she's shallow, but that's why it's easy to be co opted by someone like Regina very, very easily. Like you notice, Janice, Amar, as much as it is, and Damien. As much as they've gone through, as much as they've trauma, that's actually helped them develop. Katie, coming from Africa, still kind of naive about that, is still shallow. And that's why she's kind of easily able to be pulled in by Regina. But you know what it is? I think it's also a lack of socialization skills because she was homeschooled her whole life. You're not exposed to peers. You don't have that experience of, you know, friendships falling apart or building relationships with other people. Like you're very naive and you're kind of starting from nothing. And Could it's very easy for somebody to swoop in and like, you their way could be but then also let's not refer let's not to forget and i just want to point this out she falls back to probably one of the oldest ways that i think girls especially in high school i can't 100 cents that is get a guy to notice you she plays dumb right she plays she starts dumb. failing in she starts intentionally making mistakes to get his attention so i i think this all revolves around again we talk about the hell of adolescence in high school i think my point in all of this is even our even our hero, the person going through journey and by the end, yeah, she's developed a little bit more and has a little bit more, you know, growth and stuff like that. Even at the start, them, she is super fallible and she is super shallow because we're all kind of growing together. That's my whole point in it. That, at least that's how I see the message being in the, in the show. Your point is in the movie. Yeah, your point's valid because a lot of this plot really kind of kicks off because of a guy, because <laughs> of this guy. You made a good point, hon. If he if she had just liked some other motherfucker, yeah. none of this plot would, would happen. Probably not, because the reason why she realized that Regina wasn't a nice person is because when Gretchen went and told Regina that Katie liked Aaron, uh, Regina confronts her about it. And then, but if you like the him, then I can talk to him if you want. And she's like, okay, cool. And then when at, um, in a later scene, when they're all at a Halloween party at Aaron Samuel's house, she talks to Aaron. And I think she's trying to gauge whether Aaron likes Katie back. And then when she perceives that Aaron does want her, she makes up these like weird facts about oh, yeah. Katie. She, she panics. Yeah. yeah. She and realizes then, like if I, oh, that, that whole queen bee mentality comes back. She's like, no, if I can't have him, no one can. You know, there's only two uh, of the plastics or just everyone that have come out of this movie that have been nominated for an Academy Award since. Yes, I do. Who are they? They're yeah. Rachel McAdams and Amanda Seyfried. For? Rachel McAdams for... Oh, shit. I'm going to be really impressed if you get this. Rachel McAdams for Spotlight? Wow, good job. And, and Amanda Seyfried for... for it was for Mank. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow, Nick. yeah. Very good job. Yeah, the, so Amanda Seyfried... Ah, oh, fuck. I guess I Rachel, still keep up with the Oscars. Ma Ra Rachel McAdams for Spotlight was nominated for Steve, supporting. Steve, Didn't Steven get it. Steven cut to Steven Didn't Seagal. Didn't get it. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm missing the Oscars. I'm missing right the Oscars. Oh, my God, stop. <laughs> and uh, Amanda Seyfried for Mank. That's supporting actress. They did not win. But those are the only two that have been nominated since. I don't know if a Hallmark movie will ever get nominated, but if it does, Lacey <laughs> Chabert is a, is a shoe in on that one. For she should sure. have gotten a nod for Black Christmas. Dude. Yeah, yeah, man, I've never <laughs> seen a garden trowel go through a head better. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who came up with the word fetch? Not, no. Was it Tina Fey? It was Tina Fey. And the reason she did is she came up with it on her own because she was worried that if she put something that was topical at the time, the movie would get outdated quickly. So she was like, why don't we do that? Because short is fetch for like fetching. 
Do you know what I mean? That's very fetching. That's a fetching. I've never heard of that. Phrase. You know, you never heard of like, no. oh, that's a well, it's it's like more 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 older dialogue from like early 1900s. Like, oh, that's a fetching gown. Something like that. You never heard never heard that before? All I heard is go fetch. Go fetch. That's literally what dog well, owners tell their Well, dogs. that's fair enough. And you know what's really funny? I, I found this out as well. In the 2015 like, or something like that, the Obamas tweeted from their house, Bo, stop trying to make fetch happen. Because Bo's their dog and he had like a ball in his mouth. <laughs> and Fox News was like, fucking see, they're just fucking around in the White House. <laughs> Which is a whole... Uh, other topic. Fox but News just like it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm pissed. <laughs> Obamas love Mean Girls. What does this mean for America? <laughs> anyway, it's I a think good place to stop. I think we should leave it here. But uh, if you haven't seen this movie, and well, who are you if you haven't? Yeah. But it's really worth a watch. So we don't really want to go more into it. I think mm -hmm. it's relatable in the sense that, um, well, at least in movie world, there are cliques that exist in high school, but then. Um, Kind of transcending into real world, um, all the drama and clicks and rumors that are associated with being a high schooler, like that are associated with being a teenager. Um, so I think that it's relatable in that sense. Let this be a lesson, people. If you have clicks in high school, it only resolves a couple different ways. All right. Number one, you all have to get Saturday detention together. Okay. That's the only way it resolves. Okay. Number two, you can have a whole thing with Sean Penn. <laughs> That about a possible <laughs> that's fast times at Ridgemont High, right? Yeah, yeah, there's that one. Uh, number three, you dang. <laughs> number three, you could do this weird thing where, like, maybe one of the basketball players gets together with some new Latina girl and then they like take over the musical. I don't know. You could do something Are you like talking that. About high school musical, yes, that Vanessa Hudgens is Filipino, yeah. Uh, I thought she was Latina, she's supposed to be in the movie, but they cast a Filipino, but. Yeah, this stands on its own, I think, and it's uh, it's it's quite a giant in the genre, you know, amongst stuff like uh, like you said, Breakfast Club, Fast Time, Sixteen Candles. Yeah, well, I think also how iconic the lines are. I think that's what makes it stand out a little bit because first, some of these movies that you all are mentioning, like I know of them, but I don't know any lines from them. But I feel like for this one, especially going back to Regina George, she has a lot of good ones. Like, you think I'm an idiot? Or shut up. Well, I'll save I'll save my thoughts on it for a little bit later for that. But maybe we should go to the facts section. All right. These are real facts about the movie that I've researched. And Nick and Vanessa have never seen these before. There's only a few. We're trying a new thing. I, you heard a lot of facts in the middle of the movie this time. Let me know if you like that better, people. Uh, but regardless, these are some interesting facts that I've found that I've kept. And uh, they're going to read them live for you. And again, these are real facts, just with some other stuff included. Fact number one. Mean Girls was released on April 30th, 2004 to a $24 million opening weekend. It earned a total of $86 million domestically while in theaters, placing it at number 1,022 on the all-time inflation-adjusted domestic box office list. What a mouthful. Some of its competition in the spring and summer of 2004 included Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed, star starring Shaggy himself, Matthew Lillard, Shrek 2, starring Eddie Murphy, and finally, Soul Plane, starring Snoop as someone who was too high to be operating that plane. <laughs> That's true. All right. I just want to fly. <laughs> Internationally, it made $45 million. Um, I do kind of understand why it doesn't make a lot. Because in, in general, people, especially, and I've, I've heard this talking to people from other countries, they, they think American high school is, is what, our high, what our movies are like. So <laughs> they don't exactly want to watch all of them. But in uh, in Germany, I found out. Do you know the name for this movie in Germany? Nine. It's Der Girls Club. Der Girls. Der Club. Girls Club is the name for Mean Girls. <laughs> Can you translate that? Uh, they would change. It. It's actually translates specifically to D E R Girls G E R L S because it's making fun of like American English in some ways. Der Girls Club, even though in German Mädchen means girl. But only $45 million internationally for a total of $131 million worldwide. What was its budget? Production budget for Mean Girls 2004 was $18 million. So made like seven times its, its uh, budget internationally total. Yeah, good for that. Worldwide, yeah. So it made its money back Le relatively yeah. easily. Sleeper hit. Sleeper hit. Made it uh, a lot more. I mean, Tina Fey was well known but like not the most well known at the time this came out either this kind of helped make her be a more household name i feel like where she was getting more notice notoriety than just saturday night 
alive. Mm. You know, start doing other TV shows as well. I don't think she's done much movies. She mostly just writes for TV. Uh, top movies. Anyone take a guess? Top movies of 2004. I think we've talked a little bit about some of them, but let's see. Top movies 2004. I have 10. Who wants to, who wants to take a guess? Number one? Shrek 2. Absolutely correct. Number two? Scooby-Doo 2. No. Oh, it is another it is another two, though. Oh, I don't know. Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2. Yeah. The number the third one is a religious movie. Passion. Passion of the it's Christ. The passion. Get me down off of this cross. <laughs> passion of the Christ. Fourth one is a Pixar. Movie. Always look on the bright side of life. Pixar movie for the fourth one. Oh, I mean, I don't know when movies came out, so that's more of a Nick question. Yeah. Pixar the movie. The Incredibles. Gotcha. Okay, I was going to say that, but for some reason I thought it was like 2000. This one is a third one in a series of eight. Fifth one. T- Tokyo Drift? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Harry Potter? Harry Potter hey, 3. Yeah. Good job. Which is the best one, to be perfectly honest. Harry Potter 3 is the best one. Tokyo Drift. Prisoner yeah. of Azkaban? Prisoner of Azkaban. That's uh, Alfonso Cuaron. Fact number two. This was Amanda Seyfried, first feature role as Karen Smith. Other notable actresses who auditioned for the role of Karen included Ashley Tisdale, I love her, and Scarlett Johansson. Johansson would go on to voice Mindy in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, which would premiere the same year and nothing else. Tisdale would go on to be in a Boys Like Girls music video and try to grow Zac Efron in a high school somewhere. (laughs) Parentheses, I don't know, I didn't see the movie. (laughs) Hi, Troy! (laughs) Oh, my God. So, yeah. So Ashley Tisdale and Scarlett Johansson both auditioned and were turned down for the role of Karen Smith. This is actually Karen. Yeah, sorry for uh, this. Is actually, I think I said Amanda Seyfried's first. Uh, it's her first feature. Film. First feature film she ever did was was this movie. And wow, she has had a great career gone on to do so much more than just be Karen. You ever see those memes of like High School Musical and Breaking Bad could literally be in the same town? You know what I watched recently? The guy that went into like, I guess, snuck into the high school to try to see how fucking what is it? Sharpay could not see Vanessa Hudgens character behind the one wall in the bathroom. Isn't that one of the scenes? Yeah, yeah I, I, I watched it and they're like, no, he they definitely would have seen her right there. It's like right there. <laughs> She's like hiding behind the wall. Yeah, I didn't get that as a kid, and I thought I would get it as an adult, but I still don't. Uh, it, it's just because you can't, because he snuck it and found the bathroom. It was like pointing his, look, that's where she was. <laughs> Maybe she was crouching. I, I, it's, she it's, had her head turned or something. She yeah, just made it look like she, she like, was blended in else. chameleon, <laughs> like all like white against the wall. Oh, my God. Well, now we're under the what a story mark. This is the most interesting or funny fact I found about the movie. And uh, Nick's going to read it. Rate it one out of five marks. And then Vayne of Iroh, Tommy Zoe. <laughs> What a story, Mark. What a story, Mark. Many scenes were cut from the first draft of the script to keep the PG-13 rating. One example is the scene where Katie sees Gretchen making out with Jason at her party. Instead, Katie would have walked in on Gretchen performing oral sex on Jason, meaning she definitely wasn't half a virgin when she met him. <laughs> Actually, that was Regina's comment about Aaron Samuels. Regina might have been, but Gretchen's not. <laughs> I do want to ask Vanessa, what do you think about the original draft of what the script would have been versus what it is? Like, would you have preferred the more lewd humor in there specifically trying? Because Tina Fey is like, oh, this is what high school is like. And she's goddamn right. This is exactly what it's like. No, I like what it got cut down to. Mm. I feel like that should not be the focus of the movie. It's not an American Pie type of movie. I think it would have taken too much away from it. Okay, fair enough. I can understand that. Uh, Vanessa, what do you think of that one to five marks? Five being it's a great it's a great what a story mark. Zero being you suck, Nathan. I would give it a solid three. All right, I mean, enough. like I didn't know this fact. I actually didn't know what Tina Fey's original full script was. Um, so this was interesting enough for me, and I know exactly what scene you're referencing. Mm-hmm. Aside from this movie, what's another teen slash high school mo- genre movie that that you guys really love? Unfriended. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to step in with something more fun and okay. say High School Musical. And I feel like Ashley Tistel is like a Disney version of Regina in some ways, you know? That makes sense. Well, she's Sharpay, right? Yeah, Sharpay. I feel like Sharpay was like a Disney version of Regina. Do you know she hate, She and Lucas Gabriel like hated each other? 
I think I read that. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Yeah. But Vanessa Hudgens and Ashley Tisdale are still best friends to this day. Oh, nice. I think it's fun. I'm glad. Unfriended. Why is Unfriended a good high school movie? Oh, that's that's just a movie that a ghost happens to be part of. (laughs) It's a high school drama about how bad friends are to each other. It's friends interacting. (laughs) I would say it's actually Mean Girls, but just with a ghost. And all on and all on uh, Zoom. All on all on Zoom or, or Skype. Skype. Skype back then. All you know, all just people being bitchy and shitty to each other. But then there's just a ghost <laughs> that yes. happens to be there. I mean, like '80s. I mean, '80s high school movies. Like, there's so many to reference. Just the the archetype. And oh, the '80s like, had the best. Ones. At least, and at least seven of them have Molly Ringwald in it. <laughs> but regardless, I mean, you got Pretty in Pink, Sixteen Candles. I mean, I love Heather's. Heather's is great. I mean, if you want to be more like wholesome, Breakfast Club obviously has all of that. You can go Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Lucas. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Would uh, Can you count Lost Boys in this? They're all a bunch of teenagers. Does he go to high school? No, it's the summertime. Okay, so I don't know about that. I think, <laughs> I think a high school, I think, and chime in on this, what you think, Vanessa. I think a uniquely high school hell type movie has to have high school in it. You gotta yeah, be have to be going to high school. You gotta be in the hellscape that even, is even the building. The, even if the actors are too old to be in high school, you know, you well, gotta at least be in the setting. Yeah. Kind of off topic, but that's why the one of the more some of the more entertaining episodes of Billy and Mandy are the ones where they go to school. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a little bit of a break. Yeah, they're they're back in school. Not another teen movie for me. I mean, of course. <laughs> I showed you that movie. <laughs> yes, you did. One. Thank you. It's a great one. And uh, I've actually never seen Pretty in Pink. But I hear it's not like a comedy comedy. Like no, it's, 16 like, candles. it's like more romance. Like it's more, I mean, Pretty in Pink is pretty, you know, it's pretty much, it, it's like the great archetype story. I just know it's Andrew McCarthy from Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah, I love is. Weekend at Bernie's. A Walk to Remember. A Walk to Remember, that's right. I kind of like A Walk to Remember. That's okay, right. okay. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, you're sorry, you were saying. I want to see about sequels. What do we think about what do we think about the sequel to this? There's and a direct to video sequel to this, isn't there? And also the follow-up musical that just premiered. I saw the Mean Girls 2 movie once and never again. And I have not seen the musical. I saw the trailer for it and I felt like the humor wasn't necessarily going to be something that I was gonna be into, so I chose not to see it. I'll tell you who did see it. I did. I watched it. Yeah. <laughs> I I got to be honest. I actually kind of dig it. Like, I actually really, really, really enjoy it. What's good um, about it? I think that it just takes like the basic summary of what the movie is. And it's a very simplified, uh, straightforward thing. You kind of know from the beginning what the plot and what it is. Whereas like the original movie takes like a little bit to kind of figure out where it's going and like, okay, we're I'm, I'm in on ruining Regina's life. Maybe like, Less than 10 minutes in, uh, Katie in this one, who is and and Gory and Gory Rice is like, yeah, I'm all down for this. Let's do this. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) Yeah, let's go. Because like Janice is like, like, go ahead. Let's do it. I I think I don't know. I, I think there's a verse like a certain simplicity to it that keeps the charm of what it is. But it's definitely not the original one. It's definitely not going to have the same type of humor and. It's going to kind of go a little bit differently, but I find it a little funny. Uh, I think my favorite part is when in the instead of the uh, uh, juke boom box breaking in the Jingle Bell Rock, uh, they're trying to do like a gymnastics thing that Regina doesn't want to like practice. And instead, Gretchen like accidentally like suplexes Regina on the stage, <laughs> drops her, and just like slams her. And then like everyone, the next scene is like all of the of all of the school on TikTok just talking mad shit on like how Regina George is not the queen bee anymore, and it's Katie who's like queen. Okay, my first question is: Do you think this it made sense for this movie to be turned into a musical? I absolutely, absolutely. This is the movie that should absolutely be made a musical because the the plot itself is so. Because a lot of these characters are very shallow and it's about learning to develop a little bit more, the plot of the movie itself, I feel like, is very surface level. Does that make sense? There's not a lot to each of the characters. The most we get is like, the most we get is specifically with Regina for developing the character a little bit more. I think she's the more one that's developed besides Katie. I don't know if there's a character that's more developed than Katie or Regina. Does that make sense? In the original movie, mm. maybe Janice a little bit, but I think we get more backstory on why Regina is the way she is than we get on any other characters besides Katie. 
I do want to say, I feel like this will continue to happen. A lot of our childhood movies are going to be remade into TV shows, musicals. Like this is just the target demographic. We are the target demographic of advertising now. Back to the future. Back to the future. We are going to be have all of our stuff remade, thrown at us, and essentially used for profit. I mean, did you see that? You guys saw that Super Bowl commercial, right? For the one that had Sir Patrick Stewart and what is it? Hey Arnold in it. Creed was oh, in yeah. it. Yeah, like it's <laughs> it was all, for it it's, was for Paramount Plus. It's, it's all just it's all and just CBS. our nostalgia thrown at us to 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 try to get you know financial money and to try to just get us to hook in. And it's worked with every generation before us. And my God, millennials, it's working more than any other. I have to think because millennials, we love nostalgia. We love things from the past. Because the present is so bad for us. Right yes, now. <laughs> it's so bad that we will just throw money at anything that makes us feel like we were did when we were younger. So it's the smallest Meet Mean Girls reference. Walmart can say we are going to just use your one of your favorite scenes from a movie you love to get you to buy from us. Now I got to shop what, at Walmart. And you know what we do? We say yes. And we will just do it and do it and do it until we die. This sounds like an audition tape for Nathan. It's perfect. Like this, this seems like somebody gave you a script. Yeah, I like the musical a little bit. <laughs> wow, yeah. I think we can rate the movie now. Our honorary guest rating. What would you give this, hon? I would give it an 88. Okay, 88. That's high praise. Nathan? So, Vanessa, this being your second movie, I was, I was going through, and, I, and what I realized re-watching Mean Girls is that I should have given Legally Blonde a higher score. Is is the truth? That's actually what I relearned when watching Mean Girls. Because when I was, I was, I remind, I was like, oh, I think I liked Mean Girls more. But it has been like probably six, seven, eight years since I've seen Mean Girls. So I started rewatching it, and I go, yeah, this isn't as good as Legally Blonde. <laughs> like this not, is not no. anywhere close. Oh, so, but I can't change that. I can only punish Mean Girls more. So the rating I have to give, I forget, I gave Legally Blonde like a sixty or something. I don't remember. Uh, let's just target. I'll just give Mean Girls a 50. That way it's like under <laughs> Legally Blonde. That's the only way for me to be sure. I forgot how much I rated Legally Blonde, but it's got to be. I, Legally Blonde probably should have been bumped. Take this with the grain of salt that I should have bumped Legally Blonde by like nine more points <laughs> up, up the scale. I so probably, a C. Yeah, it should be a C. Deep down, I want to give Legally Blonde a C, but it's already out there, so we can't change anything. Why just a 50? I think it's a lot of fun, but I think... You know, I, I like a lot of, a little bit more character development. I like Katie's development, but I also want to see more of maybe Rachel McAdams in the third act and like a little bit more of that development as well. I, I don't know. I want to see how what does it look like in a school where somebody drops like a nuclear bomb of a burn book and everyone <laughs> I understand. But one day it all it, I understand the, with for the for Deus Ex Machina for the sake of the plot. Everyone's cool with each other after one day. One day of like apologizing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But that's got to be some serious shit. You know what I mean? I oh, wonder that what stays, that would that look stays like. like a blood. Stain, I wonder dude. what that would just look like longer through the through the through the school year and, and what it would be and what what would happen to Katie being the one that she wrote it, you know, because all of a sudden it's just like she's kind of like lightly bullied and now in the math. Rooms. Does that make sense? But like there's got to be some bigger feeling. I don't know. I just want to see a little bit more. But I understand what the movie is itself. That's just my own personal feeling. Okay. This is, a, this is a unique movie. There's really nothing else quite like it. I, it goes places you don't expect it to go, and I appreciate that about it. It's got a very intricate script, and it, and it is more intelligent than a lot of people, I think, give it credit for. I like it because it's funny. I'm not really into the story. 69. Okay. That's just from us dudes. 50 plus 69. Uh, is a divided by two is a 59.5 uh, for Mean Girls. I do want to say again, uh, bumpled Mean Girl, not Mean Girls, bump Legally Blonde a little bit further up the scale, <laughs> deep down internally. Whenever you listen to it, whenever you listen to me rate that, add like another nine points on. Yeah, but that's the score just from us yes. and whatnot. Uh, Vanessa's honorary score, I'm sure may speak to some, some uh, listeners or watchers out there uh, more so. Because again, this movie is beloved. All power to you. If yeah. you love this movie, me, it's not. I've seen it enough times where I do have an appreciation for it. I will say this. I, at least 30% of my rating is, is nothing but Rachel McAdams' performance. That I just love her in the movie. I think she holds up 
probably a majority of it for me is just Rachel McAdams. See, for me, I think the score is more so because I don't think too deep, super deeply about it. I think like, yeah, it's entertaining. There's some relatable content to it and it's funny. And that's kind it's of fair. what I take it for. You and know? that's a perfectly valid reason to love it. There's Not nothing really, wrong with that. Not very relatable to me. I, I gave it as high a score as it did because it is funny. I think it's funny. Yes. It made me laugh. Damien. Good, good for you. <laughs> yeah, he's my favorite. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the last portion. This is the will I let Nick in the club bit. But again, just like sometimes when we're out there, we have a guest. I am out sick. <laughs> I'm sick. Or. Uh-oh. <laughs> Vanessa's going to ask him a piece of movie trivia. And if she likes his answer, he gets in. So go ahead. Oh, I think I got one. Name a movie where a character has a drastic wardrobe change over the course of their character development. Ooh. Ooh. Mean Girls. <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Let I'm me, calling in sick. <laughs> That's cheating. Let me, yeah, actually, that. let me actually think. Barbie. That's a good one. She, she's, she's always wearing something different in every single scene she's in. Well, yes, but also I think by the end of the movie, she's more humanized, like less doll-like. Ooh, good point. So what do you think? Does he get in the club? He gets in the club. Oh, Nick got in when I wasn't there. Good what job, What was the Nick. one you were thinking of? I was thinking about Aladdin. You know how he... Pretends to be a prince, so he has a oh, drastic yeah. wardrobe. Change. I was thinking of Die Hard because his shirt just keeps getting blown up. <laughs> <laughs> prince Ali. Thank you for listening and watching to this episode of the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Be sure to subscribe to us, rate us, and follow us wherever you get your podcast from. And don't forget to follow us on our Instagram at One and a Half White Guys on TikTok at One and a Half White Guys, and now on our YouTube at one and a half white guys and be sure to tell a friend to listen or watch the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and then we kind of talk about a movie do you have the uh, fendi purses i do oh, no, but i have that i might be able to get the silver lexus it'll be all beat up <laughs> on the way it has to be a convertible <laughs> get in oh, loser yeah. we're going we're going to start a podcast yeah you're getting a loser we're going to feel sad all right everyone <laughs> we will see you next time vanessa thank you for joining us again on Thanks, this babe. podcast always love having you Thank you. We'll have you on next for the SpongeBob movie, hopefully. Whatever that is. Another 2004 movie. Yes. There we go. All right. Bye.